Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I have a bevy of news stories for you. Five big ones. We got some Xenoblade Chronicles 3 stuff. We got some Nintendo Switch Pro slash 2. Some rumors. I, I don't really know. It, it, it's information anyways for you to dissect. We also have some stuff about, well, not the Mario Kart 8 DLC Pass 2 because we actually did that in a prior video. But we also have information on updated sales for major games including Live Alive that launched last week on Switch. We also, in addition to that, have actual new sales on the Nintendo Switch eShop for a ton of major games that just launched today. Oh, and by the way, did you want more information on Mario plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope? Oh, baby, we got that information too. So buckle up your chin straps, everyone. I guess that's football reference. No, how about seatbelts? Buckle up the seatbelts, everyone. Let's get ready to roll. Grab onto that steering wheel, hit the gas pedal, and you know what? Let's roll that intro. All right, first up, let's get into some new information on Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That's right. We know it's coming out this week, right? We have the reviews. Everything's looking great. But what if I were to tell you that we actually have additional information? What if I were to tell you someone's, well, many fans' most requested thing that Nintendo needed to bring back, Iwata asks, is back. Nintendo actually started a new Ask the Developer series. They've actually had this going on for quite a while on the official Nintendo website. It's essentially their replacement for the old Iwata Ask interview series. And we are now in part three of the Xenoblade Chronicles interview. And we learned a lot of really cool details. So you know what? Editor, roll that trailer footage and let's get into the good details. So the walking distance is supposedly five times larger than in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So you want to, if you thought Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was huge, this game is on a whole new level. They started building the game with story first, gameplay added to complement the story. They note that at the beginning of making the game, the story matters because they need to know how long they want the story to take to complete, how many characters and worlds they need to build, etc. They really wanted to have a lot of towns compared to prior games, and they were actually able to achieve this. They heard complaints fans felt lost at times in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is why they have implemented a guide system. They want you to fully explore the world, but never lose sight of what the next main objective is, an indicator showing where the story continues is basically there. However, it sounds really familiar to Breath of the Wild where you could just freely explore, but also still kind of know where you need to go next according to their guidance anyways. Now, notably, for anyone who doesn't want this guide system, it can actually be turned off in the menu settings. They confirmed that while Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the culmination of the series to date, it is a franchise they want to keep going for as long as possible. So this might end the current trilogy, but Xenoblade Chronicles is going to continue to get future entries. And they want you to imagine what those future possibilities truly are at Monolith Soft, especially if you play the prior games in the franchise, because they think fans are going to fully appreciate, those who have played all of them, the massive advancements they as a studio have made to make Xenoblade Chronicles 3 happen. So they really want you to use that imagination and be like, hey, look how far we've come. Now just imagine where we're going to go in the future. So here's hoping that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 ends up being not only the critical success that it is, but also ends up being a massive sales success for Monolith Soft, ends up being the feather in the cap moment for them, and we can move on forward with obviously amazing Xenoblade games in the future. I, I keep telling you guys, Nintendo wants this to be their Final Fantasy, and honestly, I think Monolith Soft is just about to pull that off. So I think this might be the breakthrough moment this franchise has been waiting for. So have you been patiently waiting for some sort of new news on the Switch Pro or Switch 2 or whatever this next device is from Nintendo? Well, you're probably going to have to wait a little bit longer, but we do have a smidge of an update, and the person I'm talking about might be a little mad I'm talking about this, because we're talking about Nate Drake, and he doesn't think anyone should be talking about anything he's saying right now. Not because there isn't things happening, but because the, none of this changes anything. So, what do I mean? So, Nate Drake has been talking over on Fami Boards quite a bit, and essentially mentioned that, hey, look, he has heard things about the system this year, even at the Game Developers Conference, which, okay, cool, but none of this information changes things he's already said, and he only believes on... You should report things when things have changed. And remember, his most recent statement on when this system is coming out is either late 2022 or first half of 2023. So sometime basically in the next, I don't know, nine, ten months is essentially when he says this is coming. Really sounds like it's either going to be a holiday system or maybe launching alongside Breath of the Wild 2. 
Now, again, this isn't new information. He's actually stated this before. The reason I'm bringing it up is because obviously as I'm digging around to see if there's any possible updates on this, the update basically is this, that yes, developers and other people are still talking about this device. There just isn't anything new and tangible that's worth making a full report on. So in case people think, oh yeah, this thing doesn't exist, listen to this, developers aren't even aren't even talking about it anywhere. They are, there just isn't anything to say at the moment that's any different than what we've already heard. The DLSS, the 4K, the release timing. Nothing's really changed from the last time Nate Drake gave us a major update. So you can argue this isn't reportable, but I would argue it's just as important to note that this system and the dev units are still on the minds of the people making games. So it's very much still a thing. And that's what I wanted to bring forward to you guys is, hey, this is still a thing. Let's not forget about it. But now let's move on to something we actually have new information on. And that thing is actually a brand new summer sale launched by Nintendo called the Multiplayer Sale. This list is massive. The deals are amazing. So let's just dive right into that list right now. So as you can see, I'm reading this list off of Nintendo everything. And here are the lineup. This list, uh, yeah, here's the lineup. So the full lineup is as follows. 1-2 Switch is now $34.99. It was $49.99. Among Us is now $3.50. That was $5. Uh, Boomerang Foo is now $7.49. It was $14.99. Borderlands The Handsome Collection is now $15.99. It was $39.99. Capcom Beat 'em Up Bundle is now $9.99. It was $19.99. Civilization VI Platinum Edition is now $14.99. That used to be $49.99. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics is now $27.99, down from $39.99. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel is now $15.99, down from $39.99. Dead by Daylight is now $11.99 down from $29.99. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaba, the Hinaki Chronicles, and I know I butchered that, it's now $41.99, down from $59.99. Diablo 2 Resurrected is now $23.99, was $39.99. Disney, Tsum Tsum Festival, or I don't know, I probably butchered that one as well. That's all $17.49, was $49.99. Doom Eternal is now $14.99. Used to be $59.99. Enter the Gungeon is now $7.49. Was $14.99. Good Job is now $13.99. Down from $19.19. Go Vacation is now $34.99. Down from $49.99. Hot Wheels Unleashed Ultimate Stunt Edition is now $35.99. Down from $89.99. That's quite a drop. Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity is now $41.99. Down from $59.99. Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is also $41.99. Just Dance. 2022 is now $19.99, down from $49.99. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga is now its first major price drop at $44.99, down from $59.99. Minecraft Dungeons is now $29.99, down from $39.99. Monster Hunter Rise is now $30.59. That's a really interesting price point, down from $59.99. Monster Hunter Stories 2 is now $29.99, down from $59.99. My Hero 1 Justice 2 Deluxe Edition is now $19.99, down from $79.99. That is a very big drop there. NBA 2K22 is now $14.99, down from $59.99. Although, in my opinion, NBA 2K22, the NBA season's over. Should be like $5 because NBA 2K23 is on the horizon, but hey, whatever. Uh, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax is now $20.99, down from $29.99. Fogs is now $17.49, down from $24.99. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2, man, Puyo Puyo Tetris series is actually really damn good. That's $19, $19.99, down from $39.99. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game, is now $4.94. That's a very interesting price. Uh, down from $14.99. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is now $16.99, down from $19.99. Snipper Clips, another good one. That one's $13.99, down from $19.99. Sonic Colors Ultimate is $23.99, down from $39.99. Sonic Mania is now $9.99. Down from $19.99. Soundfall. Man, that game is really good, guys. If you haven't tried it out, you should. They featured it in an indie world. That is $22.49 now. Down from $29.99. Spirit Fairer is down to $9.89. What man, some interesting price points here. Down from $29.99. Star Wars Episode One Racer. Man, I love that game. That is $7.49. Down from $14.99. Streets of Rage 4 is now $12.49. Down from $24.99. Super Mario Party is now $41.99 down from $59.99. Super Meat Boy is now $5.99, down from $14.99. Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is now $25.99. Takeout No Tijuzin Drum and Fun.
One is now $9.99. Tetris Effect Connected is now $23.99, down from $39.29. The Jackbox Party 8 is now $19.49, down from $29.99. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 is now $20 on the dot, down from that $39.99 price point. And then Windjammers 2 is $15.99, down from $19.99. It says the Switch multiplayer sale. It will be live until August 7th, basically at midnight Pacific time. Next up, I actually want to talk about the brand new sales charts that launched in Japan because we have the Famitsu sales. We're getting this off of Gametsu. I'm really excited. Oh boy, Live Alive, let's just say, had a very, very insane debut in Japan. Let's take a look. As you can see, I'm getting this right off of Gametsu here. This is for sales of 718 through 724. Uh, and yeah, Live Alive debuted at 71,137 units. That's absolutely insane. Nintendo Switch Sports is at 24,869 units, now moved almost 600,000 units in Japan. PlayStation 4 has an entry in the top 10 here. Uh, Noah Bunga's Ambition Rebirth from Koei Tecmo at 23,425 is a brand new release. Monster Hunter Rise plus Sunbreak set. So the combo set is at number four at 22,871. They've now moved 200,000 units of the combo set. The No Bungas Ambition Rebirth from Koei Tecmo on Switch debuts at number 5 at 21,753 units. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is at number 6 at 11,976, moving 4.7 million units. Kirby in the Forgotten Land has moved another 9,746 units at number 7, and now moved to 812,000. Will be interesting to see if that can get over a million at some point in Japan alone. The Nintendo Switch physical version of Minecraft has sold another 9,542 units, now moved 2.7 7 million units on Switch. Ring Fit Adventure chimes in at number 9 at 9,380 units. That has now moved th uh, 3.2 thousand units. And then we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at number 10, moving 5,841 units, now moving 4.9 million units units really really great uh harbor sales are in we have the switch base edition at 30,182 units switch oled model at number two at 28,715 million units and just that and those og switch model combined is already over 20 million there but we also have switch light at 10,477 at number three they move uh that has now moved to 4.8 million so yeah 25 million switches or so have been sold in Japan to date. Uh, PlayStation 5 sold 9,804 9, units at number 4, now moving 1.5 million units in Japan. Xbox Series X sold 2,884 units, and Xbox Series S moved, moved 2,128. So, you know, combined sales of that's right around 300,000 units. PlayStation 5 Digital Edition moved an additional 1,390 units. Not very popular in Japan overall, but still moved 252,000 total units. Uh, the new 2DS LL is still on the list uh, somehow, moving 125 units. Remember, Nintendo doesn't even make those anymore at number eight. And then PlayStation 4 moved 11 units. I'm, I'm pretty sure Sony's just done making PS4, but hey, it did move 11 units, and that is at 7.8 million total units. Now, if you want to look at it uh, in terms of some, some combined numbers, uh, they did combine some numbers for us here conveniently. So the Switch family sold 69,324 units, while the PlayStation 5 family sold 11,194, and the Xbox family sold 5,012. It's always nice, good just to see the, the combined numbers there for anyone interested. Now, obviously, the big news here is they debut sales of Live Alive at 71,000. Considering that Live Alive is basically a pseudo remake of an extremely old game, it's really cool to see it do this well. Obviously, HD 2D games, RPG-wise, have come back in fashion in a really big way. We've seen huge successes with Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy, now Live Alive. I think we're going to keep seeing these games be a success because the demand for them is very high, especially ones that are at this high of a quality level. Live Alive is basically positively reviewed by every single single user who has played it so yeah i can't wait because yulia actually just bought me a copy so i'm going to be diving into it actually starting today now we're not actually done because we get to end today with news on mario plus rabbits kingdom medals anyone else out there waiting for more news i know we had sort of a blowout last month on june 25th but i actually have been waiting and waiting and waiting for more news on this game i realize it's not out till october but you know what let's jump right in because there was a new six minute interview posted by ubisoft themselves here's the footage of that interview and let's get into some of the new features we learned so beacon beach levels this is probably one of the first levels in the game players goal in this level are is to remove the darkness and get it back to its sun relaxing and partying ways now doing this doesn't end your time there you actually unlock a ton of quests after you remove 
the darkness. They also confirmed that these levels are actually planets, you know, sort of like Mario Galaxy, with multiple zones and regions per planet. So that's really cool. Lots of side quests, lots of planets. Uh, even the Snowy Peak planet they, they mentioned has a massive boss fight supposedly in it. And it sounds like there might even be a dungeon of sorts on each planet. That's really cool. They also dive into wardens a little bit, and they say wardens essentially rule each planet, but are lost on what they need to do next to fix things or unable to do it themselves. Uh, they did get rid of the grid in combat, which we know, and they said one of the primary reasons they did this was try to entice new players that might have looked at the grid as um, a barrier to entry, as like, a, oh my gosh, I don't want this tactical strategy uh, Fire Emblem type game. That's not really what this is. So they wanted to remove that grid and give a bigger sense of freedom of movement. They also mentioned that this doesn't mean that there's suddenly less strategy. Uh, they mentioned things like, hey, you can equip like six different uh, of these, you know, star abilities, you know, with with your team, each one with two. You can use the the uh, stars intermixed with everyone. And of course, when I say stars, I'm with the Lunas. You can intermix them with everyone, and it ends up being really cool. None of them are locked to a specific character. They also briefly talked about Bowser a little bit. They just thought including Bowser would be kind of a funny um, contrast to Mario. Of course, this isn't the first time Mario and you know Bowser have teamed up. Hello, Mario plus Luigi games, but still, um, Mario and Bowser's inside story. So again, we've seen Mario and Bowser team up before, but I guess Ubisoft thought it would be a neat idea, so here we go. Now, obviously, what I find really interesting about this is this is one of my most anticipated games of the year. I'm really, really stoked for Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Uh, yeah, this will be a day one by. You guys will see me live streaming it. I might even beat it on live stream. Because remember, our Tuesday game streams are back starting next week. Not really sure what the game's going to be. Maybe it'll be Zima Chronicles 3. Maybe it'll be Live Alive. Maybe it'll be a multiplayer game. I don't know. We probably even have a bonus stream next week because the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC drops on Thursday. So maybe during my Thursday stream when we're chit chat and QA and throwing back shots, maybe we end up playing some Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC as well. We'll see. I got to try the whole setup because obviously we got to run it through our new sound setup and all of that. Anyways, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you really enjoyed this. If you did make it this far in the video, you should be dropping a like and subscribing. Also, if you made it this far, we're giving away this Game Boy thing. And I'm going to actually add a new entry mode today where if you leave a comment on this video, any comment, although I would prefer it to be something substantial, if you leave a comment and a like, you actually are going to gain an additional entry. Just be sure to go check out that entry form, even if you've already entered, because it will be an additional entry. Just a comment on this video, because you know what? Why the hell not? Why the hell not in you know, encourage some community engagement and have a lot of fun while doing it? So, hey, guess what? You only found out about this if you stuck around till the end. So, uh, cheers, everyone.